Hey everyone, this is Brandon Jones, and yesterday I posted on my blog a method for enabling WebGL on the newest uh, Chrome beta that was just released for Android devices. And I want to give you guys a bit of a preview of how that's working and show some WebGL sites running with it. So, as you can see, this is my uh, Nexus 7. It's stock, aside from being rooted. And if you see down here in the taskbar, um, if it, the camera will ever focus, I do actually have the Chrome Beta on here. And at the moment, <clears throat> if I launch this and attempt to go to a WebGL site, like getwebgl.org, it'll tell me that I don't have WebGL enabled. So, I'm going to close that down. But, if I go over to my computer here, and enter in the command line that I posted on my blog yesterday, through ADB, now when we go back to the tablet, we can see that going back to the same site, I now support WebGL. Uh, so it's pretty simple. The biggest downside, of course, is the moment that you do have to be rooted. Uh, and that's just because we need to inject a command line flag into a file that requires special permissions. Uh, to show a couple of demos now, and forgive me, this is a beta, so it might be a little unstable. I might have to restart this at some point. <clears throat> Obviously, got to start out with my own. Uh, the Quake 3 demo, which has been remarkably resilient over the past couple of years. And here we go. Now, it's not really properly accounting for the aspect ratio of the screen. Uh, the full screen button, if we scrolled over to here, it, it does work, but it's a little flaky. I'm not sure if that's my fault or something within the device itself, but in any case, uh, it actually runs pretty well. You can move around and uh, jump and look around and whatnot, and it runs pretty smoothly. Right now it's showing 52, 51 frames per second, uh, which is pretty good. I've seen it get up to 60, and I've seen it go as low as 30, and it really seems to depend on what you've got running in the background at any given time. So, uh, and that that's kind of the same for any of the WebGL stuff on here. The, the performance is usually pretty decent, it, but it varies depending on what, what else the tablet's doing at the time. So if we close out of there, uh, I want to pop up, let's see here, some 3JS examples. I apologize for the shaky cam, by the way. Everything does take a little bit longer to load than on the desktop here, especially if they've got um, reasonably detailed scenes with a large amount of assets. And I think that's just somewhat to be expected, but um, it also means that we as WebG WebGL developers need to pay a little bit more attention to how much we're actually sending down to the, to the devices. Um, now, this is a really nice-looking car demo that was built on top of 3JS. Uh, it unfortunately doesn't have a frames per second counter on it, but um, as you can see, it actually was running pretty smoothly. Um, nothing that that I would complain about. I think that's got to be at least 30 frames per second. Uh, so we're looking pretty good there. And then I'll try one more. There we go. Oh, I should have hit the other one. Uh, classic WebGL Aquarium. I I have loaded all of these before, so the load times is actually better here uh, because some some of the content is cached locally. Uh, and as you can see, we're doing pretty decent. Uh, this one actually tends to run a little bit slower than most. We're getting about 20 frames per second, 19, 20 frames per second right now. Um, and of course, you can fiddle with like the number of fish or whatnot, and and that does have a small effect on it. But um, generally, this one does seem to be uh, fill rate limited or something because it's it, it runs a little bit slower than most. But 
in any case, a couple of other things to note. One, there's a lot of demos, uh, some of the, the more complicated ones, like I tried running Roam on this earlier, and it got 60% of the way through the load and then just kind of stopped. Uh, I'm not sure what was going on there. I've seen that with a couple of others. I think that there's just WebGL errors that uh, we as the developers should be catching that we're not. Um, this also doesn't support nearly as many uh, extensions as the desktop does, so some of the newer demos that are relying on floating point textures and whatnot just flat out will not work. Um, and it is early stages, so it is still sort of unstable. Um, I've noticed that if I've been running WebGL demos for a little while, the browser will sometimes just freeze and you'll have to close it down and start it up again. Um, and, you know, the, it, it's definitely not quite to the point where it's ready for public consumption. That's why it's still behind a flag. But for developers who are looking to test out their own WebGL pages on here, uh, it's this as long as you can get a rooted uh, device it's a great avenue for actually testing some of these things so if you have an inclination to try this out I highly encourage it and um, you can find out more about the method for enabling this on your device at my blog tojicode.com